Hey everyone, Miss Kay here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to artfully use oil pastels to create really awesome pieces of artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so right in front of me, I have a set of oil pastels. Now, depending on if you're using my set or personal set, you might have more options at your disposal. Um, but all you need to do what we're going to do today is just those basic colors. So I already took some time and arranged my colors in color order on my paper. So I have my pink right here, and then I have red, since red, uh, pink is just red with some white in it. Okay, then I go to orange and yellow. Then I have a light green, I have several of those. Then I go to dark green. Then I have light blue, dark blue, and a violet color. I also, in mine, I have like a peach color. This, believe it or not, is a white. Um, and then over here, I have black. And then, of course, I have brown. Now, before we get started um, on anything, I just want to have a quick note about oil pastels. So I personally love oil pastels with every fiber of my being. They are one of my probably three favorite materials to use. I think they're fun, they're expressive, they're colorful, kind of makes me feel like a child when I'm using them. Um, and so that's why I love it. Now, people have different opinions about oil pastels. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, it's definitely one of those materials you're either going to to love and thrive with it or you're really not going to like it. So I would like you guys to give it a chance. Go ahead and practice and play around with it. And I'm going to show you again just how to use them correctly, how to use them artfully. Now before we get started, the first thing to note is that oil pastels are very similar to a material that many of you are probably familiar with. So if you've never used oil pastels, that's okay. How many of you have used crayons before? Oil pastels are almost identical to crayons and have the same sort of tactile blending ability that crayons do. The major difference is they're a little bit more messy and they're a little bit more blendable than crayons are. Um, and so I, that's again why I like them, why I feel like oil pastels are very childlike, very fun. Um, but just be aware that they can get kind of messy, but that's the material you would um, in your head compare them to the most that you probably have more um, confidence in working with. So oil pastels are very similar to crayons. Okay, now before you get started with oil pastels, I just want to say um, a couple more things. Number one, make sure that your oil pastels are always in front of you, that they're not to your left or to your right, or certainly not in front of your drawing paper. The reason why is oil pastels are messy. So you don't wanna get them on your clothes and you don't wanna get them on the floor. If you get them on the floor and you step on them, it will get on your shoe and it will track throughout the room. If you get them on your clothes, they are hard to get out because they are oil-based. They're not water-based, meaning that if you take an oil pastel, you get it on fabric and then you try to get it out using water, it's going to be a little bit harder. Now, I will say, if you do happen to get oil pastels on your clothes today, have no fear, it's okay. Um, all you gotta do is take some dish soap and no water and just kind of rub at it until it goes away. Um, I've also heard rubbing alcohol works if that doesn't work, depending on what color you got on what material, um, but those are options. So definitely Google it if you get some on your clothes. Do not apply water. That's only going to make matters worse for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. Again, I put my colors in color order. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this up here. And now I have my um, black paper. You might be saying, Miss Kay, why the heck are you using black paper? Um, the reason I'm using black paper is I think black paper with oil pastels looks amazing. I think the colors pop more. I like the contrast with the black versus um, the oil pastels. Um, but of course, you do not have to use oil pastels on black paper. You can do the exact same thing on white paper. Again, I just personally prefer to use black paper, and I always recommend to my students that they use black paper as well. But it's up to you based on what materials you have at home. Um, and what you have available to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a spectrum just showing you how to blend different colors together. So you can do your spectrum any way you want. You can do a straight line, you can do a curved line, you can do a zigzag line. Um, I kind of like to do like some sort of weird like squiggle line that's like uneven on both sides. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this guy here. I went ahead and took my yellow just because my yellow is going to be my lightest color, um, which means I can layer on top of it and be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that first, okay? 
just like we do with um, all materials, you can pick any color you want to start with. Um, I always, no matter what material I'm starting with, I like to start with red um, because red is the first in the Roy G. Bibb acronym. So for whatever reason, I always use red. Okay, um, a quick note before I start coloring with my color pencils or my color pencils, my oil pastels is you'll notice uh, two things depending on uh, you know what kind of set you're using. So some oil pastels are going to be um, um, unclothed. They don't have their paper on. Um, that is okay. Um, you can totally use these. In fact, I prefer to use these. I think it works a little bit quicker. Um, some students don't like to use these. Um, if that's you because you don't like to get your hands dirty, I do have some gloves in the back of my classroom. You can also use gloves at home, um, but it just kind of depends on, on what your preference is. So I do have students that do prefer for it to use their pastels inside of their paper. Um, if you get to a point like I have with my green guy here where there's not really an edge left for you to color, all you got to do is perform some surgery by sticking an X-Acto knife here and kind of ripping out the edge, which I will show you how to do when we get to green today. Okay, but all that being said, again, I prefer to use these guys anyway. I'm going to be doing both in here because as you can tell from my colors, some of them don't have paper and some of them do. But again, I like to use these because I, you can color with the sides of them and I think um, it goes just a little bit quicker, okay? So you can pick anywhere you want to do your color. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start here in the center and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I would do with other materials where I'm starting with a light layer of my color Okay, so I did one layer of my color on the paper. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. I'm gonna move in slightly and do a second layer of my color. Okay, so I moved in slightly. So it goes from a lighter red to a darker red. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my oil pastel. And I'm gonna do a third layer, very similar, moving in slightly adding a third layer of my color. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add a fourth layer just there in the center and have it fade out nicely. So you should have um, whatever color you chose to start with should be most intense in the center. And as you get farther away from it, it starts to fade more and more, okay? Once you get to this point, you're ready to continue layering your colors. You're going to do this exact same process with every single color. Okay, the major uh, difference and the thing to be aware of is right here on this edge. So right here where that red stops is where my next color is going to be the most intense. Okay, so you want it to be the most layers right here. So you're really taking your orange and you're blending it all the way up until this most intense area with my red and you're gonna blend it all the way down. So my orange is gonna go from here to about here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the exact same process um, this guy, even though it's unwrapped, he's not quite big, or he's actually a little too big for me to be able to color with the side of my um, oil pastel. So I'm just going to color using the edge. So this will take a little bit longer, but it's the same, again, the same process. So I'm going to go ahead and do straight lines, doing one layer of my color. Again, going all the way up into my red, all the way until it gets really, really intense. So that's one layer of color. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate my paper, move in just a little bit and do a second layer of color. Not going all the way. Okay, now because I'm coloring not with the side, I'm actually gonna do more layers um, of, of this color than I did with my red, which is fine. Um, so I did one layer, two layers. Now I'm rotating it back and I'm still moving in each time. Now I'm doing a third layer. It's just a little bit smaller of a space. Okay, and then I'm gonna take just that center area and I'm gonna do a fourth layer. Another thing um, I didn't mention with oil pastels is try not to hold them too firmly. If they break, it's okay, but we try not to break them to the best of our ability, okay? 
Um, this is where you would start kind of looking at this section right here and see, is this flowing nicely together? Um, so for me, I'm noticing there's still a lot of um, black left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my orange, blend it up into my red, all the way up until that line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my red and blend it back down into my orange very carefully because red is darker than orange. Okay, so I took my red, blended it back down into my orange. And I'm gonna take my orange one more time, blend it back up into my red. Kind of take any lines you're seeing and just use a circular motion to blend them together. Okay. So now my orange and my red have been blended pretty well together. Again, any place you see a line, just kind of add a little bit more of your color before moving forward. Okay, so I have a really nice transition here. Might add just a little bit more orange in this kind of midsection just so I'm ready for when I add my next color. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to yellow. So yellow is gonna be the exact same thing. I want it to be the most intense right here. It's gonna go all the way up to here and probably all the way down to here. Um, with yellow, same as with any other material, you want to add more yellow than you think you need um, because yellow gets eaten alive by other colors. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and color this in, same exact process. One layer nice and thick on my paper. Making sure, try to get those edges. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead, rotate my paper, do the exact same thing, again, moving up slightly. and I'm blending it up into my orange. It's about right here where I start to notice a lot of students like to take their finger and try to blend it together or take a paper towel and try to blend it. I recommend avoiding that at all costs or at minimum avoiding that until the very, very end just because it does get messy. But quite honestly, if you're coloring correctly and you're layering your colors together, you shouldn't need to use your finger to blend or use a paper towel to blend. So just really focusing on those colors and working on making them um, layer one on top of another is really going to help with your project. Oops, give me just one moment. Okay guys, so just taking that yellow and orange and blending them into each other. So again, as long as you're layering those colors together they should blend really nicely and you shouldn't have to use your finger. But again, if you're choosing to do that, make sure that you wait until the very end um, so your hands aren't getting super messy. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take my yellow, blend that back up. Really wanna focus again, if you're noticing any kind of line, just blend up into it. And blend back down. So don't worry if you can still see some of the black paper underneath, that's just something that's going to happen. If that bothers you, that would be a situation where maybe working on a white paper is better for you or for your project. It kind of just depends on what you want to do. I'm going to work on blending that in and just um, a little bit, but sometimes that also happens. You just got to kind of build it, mix it around. It's just that it's an extra layer of wax that got on your paper. Now I will say, I have noticed sometimes students press too hard and they want to erase. You can't really erase oil pastel, but if you do have um, any kind of nail, um, you can kind of press on it and push the wax off, can help lighten an area. Um, but again, call me over if that's happening because I wanna make sure that that's what you have to do, but just know that that is an option. Don't really use an eraser because it's not gonna clean up very well. Okay, next we're gonna take our lighter green and blend it into our yellow. Uh, please note that with um, green, you do want to use a lime green first, so one of these guys, before you use one of these darker ones. 
um, because yellow, again, gets eaten up alive by other colors. So you wanna be careful with your blending. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my green, my light green. I'm gonna color it in down here and blend it up. Again, the closer it gets to the yellow, the fewer layers I'm going to do. Okay, and you wanna take your other color and blend it back down, which in this case is yellow. And this should blend really nicely again, as long as you're using that lime green color and not the dark green color. And you're just gonna do your best to blend those colors together. Now, I clearly ran out of room at the bottom of my paper, um, but if you wanted to keep going or if you have room on yours, you would just take your dark green and continue doing the exact same process. But like I said, I ran out of paper, so I can't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move up here to my red. Um, so the color that is next to red on the color wheel is going to be violet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more red so I have something to go with. Red and violet have a similar issue that yellow and green do. So since green is a cool color and yellow is a warm color, um, the green kind of eats the yellow up alive. Um, and it's similar with violet and red, although it's not as intense. We're just gonna do again that exact same thing, taking your violet, doing your layers. Okay, did one layer. Two layers. And again, where it's where the red and the violet meet is where this violet's going to be the most intense. And you're just going to layer those colors together. Okay, so I'm going to take my red and blend it back down. into my violet and then again, take my violet back up into my red. So as you can see, it's a lot of just practicing your blending. And moving up and around. Okay, so I started fading this guy out. This is where I'm gonna to start to add my blue in because blue is next to purple on the color wheel. Um, you will note you do have a sky blue and a dark blue. You do wanna use the dark blue. The sky blue does not blend as well because it has white in it, which we'll get into when we talk about shading with oil pastels. Okay, so I just have a little bit of room left. So I'm gonna add this blue color to my violet. Again, more intense the farther away from my violet it gets. And you do want to take the time to blend both colors into each other. This is going to make a really rich purple color. and then that's gonna blend really nicely. Okay, so this would be the chance, um, once you finish your spectrum, um, you kind of look at what you have, see if there's any area you need to go over again so it blends nicer together. But overall, my colors are flowing really well together. I might go over this area again just a bit, but it's gonna look different depending on what you did and kind of what colors you're having a bit of a harder time with. 
Um, at this point, some of my students like to take their black and outline their shape. This helps make it look a little bit cleaner. Totally up to you if that's what you want to do. And so having sort of like a firmly outlined shape. Um, some students, again, just really like the way that looks. But it's optional. Okay, please do not do that black outline until you have completed this. Um, once you do the black outline, it's really hard to continue adding colors. Now, again, of course, I ran out of room on mine, but if you still have room, you will just take your darker green and blend on this side. And then if you still have room, you just go to your light green here. And then on this side, you do dark green and then blue, et cetera, et cetera. So you just repeat the colors until um, you go through the entire color spectrum or you finish up your paper. All right, guys, so um, that's it for um, coloring with um, oil pastels, just doing that basic spectrum. Um, in the next video, I will show you how to do um, tinting, toning, and shading, and how to shade objects to look three-dimensional using the same materials. But for now, um, that's all we are doing. So go ahead and keep practicing that. And if you have any questions, let me know and call me over and I will answer them. All right, guys, bye.